Okay, brothers and sisters, we are here at the uh, famous headquarters of HAS Productions one more time with Mike Freitag. And uh, Mike already showed us some pretty high-end stuff um, that he was playing with on this, uh, this Behringer X32. Um, uh, but we're going to go kind of through the, the control surface and what it's got and everything else. So, uh, Mike, why don't you take it away? All right, great. So what we have here is I'm just going to go through a bit of the input parameters here and uh, how quick it is to get around on this little thing. Every control parameter you have versus dynamics, EQ sends so you have a view button okay and that gets you directly to the parameters you're trying to control so you want to select your input if you want to go adjust your gate you got it right there or you can do it two ways and select through your scroll through your pages so you got your showing you completely what's going on with your whole input you got IO here you got your gates compressor EQ your sends and then what's going on with your main bus um, What's super cool about this console is, obviously, you have sends on fader, you have 32 channels. Everything is easily accessible through here, whether it's the oscillator, talkback page, and monitor page. So that means if you're doing things on the fly, which sometimes people forget how to do these days, <laughs> being with cards and stuff, is everything's quickly selectable here. This is my favorite part about this console, is these view buttons here. Um, and then also the routing page is also really sweet because you have multitude of options of what you want to do. Okay, you have AES 50 AB, your card slots. You got your P16. This is the uh, personal mixer that they released. You have 16 outs there. Card outs, what you want to send to your cards, AES 50, which does 48 channels at 48K versus Midas's digital consoles when they run at 96. Midas only likes to use 24 channels out of the 32 possible on the bandwidth. When they're doing 96? When they're doing 96. But Behringer, since it runs inherently at 48K, you have 48 channels, and you can mix and match any channels you want to send or receive uh, via the AES-50. Um, now, just to put it in perspective a little bit, as far as I know, there's no other uh, digital mixer in, especially not in this price range, with AES-50 on it, period. There is... Only consoles I know of with AS50 on it, period, is the Midas, period. Okay. With just that feature alone, would easily put this thing at a price point of 10, 10 grand on up. With that, one would think, but the price point on this yes. is under three grand. Yeah, I mean, and just with the routing options, what you can send and receive, I mean, that means you can send this thing to a multi-track, you can send it to another console, you can use it as a split if you wanted to, you can, um, you can do anything you want to do with it. You can mix and match inputs, outputs, um, and it sounds really, really good. Okay, so um, uh, 32 inputs, how many outputs? 16, 16 outputs. outputs. Analog outputs. Analog outputs, plus your AES-50, plus, plus your, your personal monitor outputs. So Plus it has one one channel, one out aes EBU output. Uh, aes EBU as well. Yeah. So um, tons of I.O., super easy to get around. Um, that's kind of the beginning. We'll obviously go back to this at some point. We'll show you, we'll get deeper into the EQ and deeper into the... the the dynamics and the effects and everything show you how all this works, uh, but that's that's a taste to start with. So uh, over and out.